Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be setting up a node for Vish AI. Vish AI is extremely new. It's barely a month old. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I like to get into projects extremely early. Getting into projects extremely early also means extreme risk. So definitely be aware of that before you even get involved. What I will be doing is giving all the links for this project in the description below. Once you've done your research and you know that you want to get involved with this project, a couple of things to note of where to purchase the coins. And that's going to be Zegex. I'm going to be putting a link for that down below, as well as where I'm hosting my node. I'm not hosting it at home. I'm going to be hosting it on a VPS server. Node Orbit is extremely reliable and very low cost, and that's why I'm using it. All the commands that I'm going to be using to set this node up will be in the description below. I'll also link to my blog with all the steps in case you get confused anywhere along the way. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video, and we'll get started. All right, so I'm going to start on my desktop. I have VMware Workstation Player already installed. Can go ahead and open that up now if you don't have vmware workstation player already installed you can watch this video and i'll walk you through the steps i have ubuntu already installed this is version 20.04 i'm going to select this i'm going to go ahead and start it up and it'll just take a moment here for it to load and i'll get to the login screen all right so we're at the login screen and i'm going to go ahead and log in here perfect and it's going to log in and it'll bring me to my desktop and here we are at the desktop I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser and I'm going to head over to the Vish AI website. And here we are at the Vish AI website. It's vishcoin.com. I'm going to click on the wallet and I'll jump over to the wallet section. You have two options here, one for Windows, one for Ubuntu. Go ahead and select the Ubuntu one. And uh, we can see that the latest version that we have is 1.2.0.8. It's two weeks old. You can go ahead and click on this and it's going to download onto my computer, which is now complete. I'm going to go open up the file. I'm going to minimize this or close out of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the file over here. And we want to use the QT file, which is this one. I'm going to select it and then click on extract. Now it's going to let me extract this anywhere. I'm going to use my documents folder. That's where I like to extract it. Anywhere is really good as long as you know where you're extracting it. Go ahead and click on the extract button. And that is now complete. You can click on show the file so you can see it in the folder. You can see I had Austin, I've recently done Austin. Um, if that is the QT wallet over here. This is the one that we just extracted. So I can go ahead and close all these extra windows. Now what I'm gonna do is go into my terminal and open that up and we're gonna change the permissions because we're not gonna be able to run this properly without full permission. So we're gonna change our directory. So CD space and then we're gonna go over to documents, hit enter. And inside documents, I'm just going to type in ls to list its contents. And we can see the Vish AI file is there. I'm going to type in chmod space 777 space, and then type in the Vish AI dash QT. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now we've changed the privileges to this so we can go ahead and execute it and run it. So we're going to type in period forward slash. And then we're going to type in Vish AI dash QT, or you can just hit the tab on your keyboard, hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and launch it. So the first question it's going to ask is if you want to use the default directory or a custom directory, the default one is fine for me. But if you're running into space issues or you want to save it somewhere else, you can select this option and leave it as default and then click on OK. And it's going to go ahead and launch the core wallet here. This will take some time for it to sync up. Now you can see that it says three weeks behind this. Because this project is somewhat new, it won't take too long. I've seen other projects like Neoxa take almost a whole day to sync. It really depends on connectivity as well as how long, how big the blockchain is. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sync and I'll jump over to the next step. There's a couple things that I want to cover with you. The first thing is you want to make sure that you lock your wallet. So the first thing that you want to do is go up here to the top, click on the backup wallet option. And in here is where you can save your wallet.dat file. This, this file is crucial. You want to save it to a location where it's nice and secure. Save it to a U USB stick. Save it anywhere that's offline. So if there's anything that goes wrong, you have this wallet.dat file that you can restore your funds. Uh, so that's definitely important. You want to make sure you back up your wallet.dat file. And the second most important thing is to encrypt your core wallet. So you go up here to the settings menu, click on encrypt wallet. And this is where you can type in your new password or passphrase. Uh, this password has to be at least 10 or more random characters or eight or more words. You're going to type that and then retype it in the exact same ones right over here and then click on OK and your wallet is encrypted. You want to make sure you save that in a secure location. OK, so it is all synced up and what we want to do is create a receive address for our collateral. 
So what we want to do right now is just create an address that we can send our funds to. So I'm going to go ahead and create one right now. I just have to click on request payment and I get an address right over here and copy that. And what I'm going to do is going to jump over to my Zegex account. I'll make sure I link this exchange in the description below. That's what you want to use to purchase the Vish coin for your collateral. I'm going to close all these extra windows because I don't need them for now. So I'm going to leave this as is for now. I'm going to send myself the collateral and I'll be right back. Okay, so my collateral is here. You can see that I have 1 million and five. I sent an extra five just to handle transaction fees. Even though they're minimal, I won't have to worry about any type of fees going forward. So we got a few commands that we're going to run. And the first one, I'm just going to put this over here. The first one is to get a new address. This is going to be for our collateral. So I'm going to go up here to the tools menu at the top, go to debug. Inside debug, I'm going to type in get new address and then hit enter. And it's going to spit out an address for me. I want to make sure I copy this. And I'm just going to put it over here because I might have to refer to that later. And then I'm going to go back over to my main window and I'm going to send myself the 1 million collateral that I need for my node. So I'm going to click on the send button up here at the top. I'm going to paste in that same address and then I'm going to put in 1 million. Okay, it's exactly 1 million. We don't want this box checked. We want to make sure we have exactly 1 million in here and we can go ahead and click on send and then confirm. So we're sending ourselves the collateral transaction right now. Okay, so that has been sent. Now what we want to do is go up here to the transactions and we see that our transaction has been sent over here. We're waiting for at least one confirmation before we continue. We have one confirmation right now, so that's great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click on copy transaction ID. I'm going to paste this over here into my text file because I'm going to be referring to that later. Uh, for this transaction ID, we actually don't need the dash or the zeros. So we're going to just delete that and keep everything else. And to confirm our transaction ID now and to get the output for this transaction ID, we're going to go back up to the tools, debug, and inside here we're going to type in master node outputs. Now we're going to hit enter. And this should be the exact same address that we have right over here, and it is. And we wanna take note if this is a one or a zero right next to it in the quotations. We have a one, uh, so we wanna make sure that we note that because again, this could be a one or a zero. So inside our master node outputs, I'm just gonna put a one over here. And then we're gonna be typing in the next line, which is gonna be master node gen key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, or you can just type it in, type in master node gen key and then we're going to hit enter and this is going to be very important this is what we're going to be need this is the key that we're going to be entering in node orbit so I'm going to be copying this and I'm going to be setting it aside there we go and that's going to take care of all the commands that we have to run inside this window we can go ahead and close this and now what we want to do is edit the configuration file so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go into my files folder and I have everything inside and we're over here in our home folder. You can see that there's nothing in here. Uh, by default, the system files are hidden. So we wanna go up to this menu option up here at the top and we wanna say show hidden files and then voila, some things start popping up. And this is the folder that we're looking for. This is the Vish AI core wallet folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and double, double click on that. And inside here, we're looking for the master node config file. So we'll double click on that as well. And uh, let me just expand this over here so you can see it properly. Actually, I'll open it up all the way so you can see it in full screen mode because you want to paste in our information the same way. So I'm going to hit enter and then I can type in node one. That's going to be the name that I'm giving it. And I'm going to put in a space. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be gathering all the information. So the IP address, the IP address is going to be the IP address that's assigned to you by Nord Orbit. It could be anything like 192.168.1.1. This is just a dummy address. The port that we're going to be using is 8083. So you enter in the IP address that's given to you by Nord Orbit and then colon 8083. So go ahead and highlight this. I'm going to copy that and then I'll paste it in. Again, use the real IP address, not the one I'm putting in here. And then we're going to put in space. And then the next part is to get the master node key gen. So we're going to highlight all of this information. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste it in. And then space. And then we're going to need the transaction ID. Transaction ID is right over here. Copy that. And then over here, I'm going to paste it in. And then space. And then we're going to look for the master node outputs. So the master node outputs I have as one. It might be a zero for you. You want to make sure you know which number that is. And then you go ahead and type in the one there. And then we just have to save it. Once you have it saved, you can close out of here. 
and uh, we don't need this folder anymore. We can close out of here. And in the master nodes, we're not gonna have anything yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reload our wallet, but we're gonna jump over to the Node Orbital website and enter in our private key. So now that we have all our steps completed and we have our gen key, I'm going to jump over here to node orbit and I'm going to go ahead and log in. And you can see I have a bunch of nodes set up down over here. We have Vish AI. All we have to do is update the node key. So we're going to go over to the actions and update node. And this is the last step. We're going to be putting in our gen key right over here and then clicking on the update button. Okay. So our gen key is now entered. The last thing I want to do is reload this wallet. So I'm going to shut it down. I'm gonna go ahead and start up our wallet, hit enter, and it's gonna load up here. And we just gotta let it sync up. So the wallet is all synced up. Now we can go over to the master nodes tab right over here. And you can see that it says status is missing. I'm just gonna select it and then click on start missing and then say yes. And then we have successfully started one master node. We'll click on okay. And it's gonna be in this pre-enabled status. Now, uh, it will say enabled when it's completely up and running. You wanna keep an eye on this until it actually is enabled. Uh, it's a little bit flaky. I noticed that it does not stay online very often. Even when it says enabled, make sure you check in every few hours, make sure it stays in that status. After a day or so, if it's enabled, it's pretty much good to go. You're not gonna have any issues. And that's all you need to do. And that's all there is to it. We set up our Vish AI node. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.